So it's going to be really cool because so we're first starting to the invasion to take out Darnassus, and anytime you get to kill a night elf, it's awesome. Sure, <laughs> that's a lot of information. It is a lot of information. <laughs> All right, welcome to Comically Gaming, episode 115. The uh, This time we're going to cover July. Corey, how was your month? Uh, it was good. Um, I kind of touched on it last week, but I, I just uh, just been playing more Xbox One. Um, so I was just going to, that's pretty much what I've been doing, besides watching anime and The Preacher, which is still amazing. Um, it's, are, you, uh, are you learning to like its warts a little bit better? I know last week you uh, uh, tore it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's, I still don't like that there's not a screenshot button. Right. Um, but, uh, I'm getting used to the guide, like, in, you know, the main menus and stuff. Um, they're not too bad. I will say that, um, the battery life, I've had that, these same two Duracells, Duracells that it came with, and my sh I've probably played like 30, 40 hours, and they're not even half dead. Like my PlayStation controller dies in like five hours. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, if the rechargeable ones last that long, that's cool. It's way longer than the PS4 controllers, it seems like. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's like a, a phone battery or whatever. You know what I mean. Any of those that you're charging with USB have right. a super have a much shorter time. The, uh, but yeah, that's it's. I would still prefer it to be PS4 style. So would I. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. It's like but, crazy there. <laughs> yeah. No, I just think if they could, you know, if, if they could make, I don't know. Maybe it's just because they're different types of batteries. It's just <clears throat> they last way longer than I thought. I thought I was going to be. For sure, playing it plugged into my Xbox at this point, but I'm not. Um, but yeah, other than that, I've just been playing a lot of. I've been playing a lot of Fortnite and uh, what's the Fortnite PUBG. Fortnite and PUBG. Yeah, Fortnite and PUBG. Ah. Not 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 playing a lot of them, but I've been playing them with my friends and and I'll say I don't like those games really that much. I, they are fun to play with your friends, but I would not. It's not yeah. something I want to sit down and play, like unless I have a group of friends on that wants to play either of them. And PUBG is better because it doesn't have the building. But um, right. But then, yeah, and then just the other thing with the Xbox is I just think it's weird that all the exclusives, like the three games that I probably played the most, are that Recore game, the um, Sea of Thieves, and then State of Decay. I've spent almost thirty hours on and. <coughs> Like all their big exclusives are just kind of big, boring open world games. Like, yeah, except for Halo, right? That's, except that's for Halo, Halo, yeah, and Gears. Yeah. Gears a little bit, uh, but Gears is so cheesy, I can't handle it. Right. But yeah, like those ones, all of them, that record game, you go around collecting cores, like in this giant world with your robot pets, and then, the, you know, the zombies, you just survive the zombie apocalypse and and then the Sea of Thieves you're just sailing around a giant ocean I mean I like them all and I actually am really starting to like State of Decay like 20 hours in it's, it's awesome just because I'm so attached to my crew now and that, and it's got permadeath that when situations get hairy it's I'm having a crazy intense time and when I make it out of it it's like oh thank god like it's it's not a, it's a better feeling like it's Brings out a lot of emotion in me, more than most games, for sure. But uh, awesome. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically all I wanted to say. Just expand on my Xbox experience, and I just think it's weird the uh, all their big games. I, I don't know. I'm kind of disappointed. I, I would say I'm not mad. I'm not disappointed that I bought it in general, but it's none of those games are like, wow, this is the. Yeah, it's so the weakest of the current this. gen consoles like, still. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like my the Switch. The future looks bright, but right now it is the weakest, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, what, what you been up to, Derek? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, like many other people, or some other people, I don't know. Um, I had my soul caved in by Brian K. Vaughn. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you read it, Nate? Yeah, I read it. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I, I can't get into it too much because there's <laughs> massive, massive spoilers. But um, what we did learn, and I think the spoiler is slightly connected to uh, the news, which is that they the they're taking a, a year, at least a year off from the book. So. Brian K. Vaughn, Fiona Staples, probably going to do some other projects, I imagine. Uh, I think he mentioned something at the end, but at least... I think he already does. He already does. Yeah. He'll probably... Yeah, he's, yeah. He wrapped uh, Paper Girls at the end, and I think he said Barrier, and then he said something else he was maybe going to work on, I think. But, um, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to get into... Uh, uh, waiting this long. I know I talked to Josh about it last night, Merla from Lifers and Horrents, um, and he he did not like that it ended that way before the break. And he yeah. was like, I have to hang with this information. <laughs> yes, the Han Solo and Carbonite. For all of this time. <laughs> yep. Every day yeah. when we wake up, we've got that knowledge in our heads now while we're waiting a year to see what happens next. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's rough. I, I think um, uh, without naming names, I think the story changes uh, with, well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I know what you're yeah. talking about. I agree. It's a different, Anybody, it's a different I, book now. Yeah, yeah you know? I feel like with the intermission, they, it might be, yeah, like a real different book when it comes back. Like, I don't even, like I was saying to you, like they might even, I wouldn't be surprised if they did like a time leap or something. <laughs> right, yeah. I agree. You know. yeah. I agree. They can play yeah. with time. Absolutely. Yeah. They've uh, done that before, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. They have. Yeah, I, won't, I almost said spoilers for old Saga. Everybody, if you don't read Saga, go read Saga. It's the best, <laughs> it's the best yeah. out there right now. It's the greatest. Yeah. Someday yeah. Jeff will listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get, get to my reactions or anything like that. I would just encourage you um, to, uh, you know, to read the series and get to that point because it – uh, there, there are very few things like that that have happened in the comic book format. So, yeah. Jeff, how was your month? Uh, it's been crazy, dude. Most of it has been playing. Uh, I got the World of Warcraft bug again because of the new expansion. And it always sucks me back in. Every time they do a new expansion, <laughs> and I'll play, play for like eight months, and then I'll get bored with it. But then... No, eight months? Uh, another, another, you know, another expansion drops out. And it's like here's my money again. And the last time I started playing it after watching that Warcraft movie, and then they launched <laughs> Legion, and Legion was awesome because I managed to take a character from level one to the, at the time the max level was a hundred. I went from one to a hundred in less than three weeks doing the ex pre-launch ex uh, events. And it's crazy what happens with David. Yes. Oh, no, I thought wrong that was coming. Wrong reason. <laughs> you got me confused. So, yeah, playing mostly World of Warcraft. I'm almost done with school, and then pretty much it'll be a lot more fun. Yeah, what are you going to dig into? What, what are you looking forward to firing up once you're done with school? World of Warcraft. Yes. Is that it? <laughs> really? Even though I'm playing. Well, no, because I, I was playing Far Cry 5. I need to finish Assassin's Creed Origins. And I need to finish uh, Watch Dogs 2. I got to finish Monster Hunter World. <laughs> all, before <laughs> Spider all before Spider Man comes out in September. Yeah, right. And Jeff and I talked about God of War, too, because I, I finished that the other night. Yeah. So we got to discuss details. And he went oh, you home. did finish it? He I went finished home it that? Saturday night. Saturday night. Oh, Saturday night, yeah. yeah. Or Friday night. One and, of the nights. Uh, that's, our, that's our video game segment. Yeah, I, I, I promise that once uh, once I'm done with school, I will get through the rest of Saga. You know, <laughs> yeah, volume. Sure. You know, got to do se now? issue seven to fifty four, whatever it's at now. You know, so <laughs> yeah. you like Star Wars? You got a year <laughs> before the break. I, I'm good. I got lots of time. Yeah, yep. I got lots of time. So yeah, most of my month is just seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, being done with school. And now with WoW coming out with a new expansion, it's got me sucked in again. Where's WoW compared to uh, EVE for you? 
it's completely different. Eve Eve gets really boring and repetitive after a while, and I just get tired of the politics. Ooh, I, hearing that, right? I, I get tired of the <laughs> I get tired of the whiny politics and just it, it gets. Again, monotonous. Whereas WoW is great when there's content, and then once you do all the content, it gets boring too. I've been playing World of Warcraft for 14 years. I've only been playing Eve for 10 years. (laughs) That's hilarious. So, you know, I, you know, I guess it's a way to pass the time, and it it is affecting my schoolwork a little bit. But (laughs) it is what it is. Finish it up. Finish it up. Nate, Nate, what are you doing? What have you been doing? Besides house so, construction and first of all, and scooter clubs, reunited with my oh. baby. <laughs> so I love the Vita. I love the Vita. I don't care. I know the Vita's day is past now, yeah. but I, I love it. There's, I have more games right now for the Vita than I could ever play. Like if I have it for the rest of my life, like until that thing breaks and the battery dies on it, I'm gonna rock the Vita in some of the the, the PS1 like RPGs that come on sale for a dollar for that thing. I can just fill it up with those and just have games forever on it and classic awesome games, right? So I love the Vita. Wow, let's the, get rid uh, of that MLB 14 the show because that was not fun. It was so a bad you, experience. So if you see a character named Joe Mama, you know who that was. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, I also got a foosball table that I have room for in my house here, which is kind of weird. I've never been a big foosball guy, but it was free, and I had room and, like, a person to help me move it. So I was like, why not? So I'm working on my foosball skills a little bit. I'll, I'll report back ar- around that. And, uh, I suck at foosball. Yeah. <laughs> I do too, yeah, but I'm getting Same. there. Well, it's the, sports uh, related, Kerry, so you're not good at sports. <laughs> good. So, so I'm good at disc golf. <laughs> Thank you, sack. <laughs> <laughs> He's good at the hippie sports for sure. <laughs> the, uh, so, and then the video games, uh, Pinball FX3, right? I, I love it now. I'm, I'm totally into it. Uh, love playing the leaderboards with you guys. Can't say enough. If you watch the show, hit us up on the PlayStation Network. Come find us on Twitter, or on Discord, or Facebook, and uh, we'll get you our our contact info so you can hop on those leaderboards because it's fun to I almost to, broke my controller twice today <laughs> in anger awesome. it is exactly. controller breaking the uh but yeah i i just it's so awesome to see your guys scores i am i'm gonna i gotta say i'm gonna dominate when this is all said and done just i played a lot of pinball in my life i'm i'm pretty <laughs> good at it i'm not great like if we're talking about tournament competition style i would not be able to hang with real people but I got an edge on your average Joe for sure, yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, but they're fun. I love them. I love going after those scores, and and the fact that all that stuff's online now makes it. Otherwise, I would buy those tables, play them a few times, and then probably move on to the next one. It, when when I was trying to get that portal table, I must have played that game a hundred fucking times before oh, dude, I, I got the top table. score on it. I, I love it now. Yeah. I really like it a lot, to be honest. But. Uh, but it, it's it's super advanced. Like that game. Like that's one of the things I was gonna say when we were talking about like the story aspects and how to go through the pinball tables. Like those tables in that game are super advanced. Most pinball yeah. tables out there in real life are like a few steps lower than that as far as complexity of what you're trying to do. Like some of those tables, when you're trying to get through the story stuff, it's it's there's a lot of steps to it, right? And it's hard yeah. to keep track of. You gotta play the table a million times before you kind of remember them. But uh, but yeah, you're jumping in the deep end if you haven't, if you're not a big pinball person by trying to play those games. For sure. <laughs> um, and then the last thing that I wanted to say for July is that like, it's as much as this is like a sad statement, I'm not, I'm gonna own it. Books have come back into my life again. Like for the past, like I don't know more than a decade i did not read that much i i literally i I would grab a book i would pick it and say i'm going to finish this book and it would take me two years or something right like i i would get it done but i i didn't read much at all and uh just rocking it it, crystal shard and the witcher book that i read before that um i just love them so much and it's like it's it's weird like to me, I, I right now I've been so busy this summer that I get like a half an hour of free time in a day, 
and I'd way rather feel that with a book than a video game right now. Just like the the <laughs> imagination juice juices yeah. get flowing a lot better, and uh, just really digging it. So, anyways, I just wanted to say that. Thank you, books, for returning to my life. Hell yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. in support of that statement. I love books. <laughs> All right, so in uh, in anticipation for the next expansion for World of Warcraft. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about World of Warcraft in this segment. Uh, most of it's going to be like a Q&A because I have lots of knowledge about World of Warcraft and the other two don't know anything about it. Right. One thinks it's like Fortnite and She-Ra, <laughs> which I don't get the totally analogy. But, um, like they had a baby. I, I can say I played up to level 5 once. Wow, you didn't even make it out of the starting zone. No, I did not make it out of the starting zone. Yeah, wow. But I know a little bit. Horde or Alliance? <laughs> What's that? What race was it? I don't remember, man. Oh, my God. It was, it was like three years ago, and I put like two or three hours into it. I played That's MMOs before. I, I played a year of uh, Final Fantasy XI. That's oh. the ones I put the most time into in my life. Um, and I dabbled in ESO and... Uh, uh, Final Fantasy 15 also just dabbled just a little bit. Oh, in Neverwinter. I mean, I played, what, five, ten hours in Neverwinter. Yeah, yeah sometimes, you know, I don't always count Neverwinter as an MMO in certain ways. It's more D&D based than World of Warcraft. I mean, World of Warcraft does get its roots from Dungeons and Dragons. Um, just the basis of the whole game is sort of like that. But, I mean, honestly, it's it's basically taking, if you played any of the old RTSs, the real-time strategy games of Orcs vs. Humans, Warcraft 2, II, Warcraft 3, World of Warcraft is, what it did was, is in Warcraft 3, you know, they start getting 3D modeling and, and all that. So World of Warcraft brought the camera from top down to almost right. first person. You could bring it in, you can scroll in and be first person, but it's weird. It's more fun sure. to see your avatar. I actually and, have Warcraft 3 up on the shelf. See, and, and so Warcraft 3, if you played through that campaign enough where you know where you get in with uh, Jaina Proudmore and Arthas, um, who was the paladin that was fighting Sylvanas, the Banshee Queen, that Warcraft 3 actually is sort of the lead into World of Warcraft in a way when you get into one of the expansions, the Wrath of the Lich King. Nice. Nice. I gotta say I put the most time into two. But anyways, we're, we're digressing. Two is cool. so no, that's cool. No, that's what's cool. going on with the uh, I mean, with the new expansion and, and uh, I noticed you saying tonight, so you streamed in the past mm -hmm. Sunday night stream and you were talking about like they've actually changed it pre-expansion. Like, is there like an in-between story story going on right now? There is. There's. They're doing um, lately. I think it started with Cataclysm. They started doing these pre-launch events, and three to four weeks leading up to the expansion release. Now the expansion drops on the 13th on a Monday at like five o'clock Eastern time, which is okay. really weird because usually expansions they drop at midnight. And on Tuesday morning, so it's it's kind of weird, but they they're launching it early, and with the pre-launch events, what they're doing is they're setting up the story because they're getting rid of two major capital cities in this expansion. Um, they're getting rid of Darnassus, which is the Night Elf uh, starting city, and their capital city, and so the Horde are coming up into an area called Darkshore, and they're doing a two-pronged attack. They're coming in from Felwood, which is over to the to the east, and then they came up through Ashenvale. We took out this small town. You, one of the missions, you go in as an assassin, and you poison guards, and you can kill civilians, but it's awesome because the writing they did was was really good. Uh, just mm -hmm. a lot of the dialogue. You're with this other assassin. You, you sit there and mark a civilian for death, and he's like, oh, I normally don't kill civilians, but I like your style. Nice. And so it's really cool. And you invade up from the south, and then... There's a lot of cutscenes with the druid that's in charge of the night elves. His name is Malfurion. And then you have Lady Sylvanas, who's the Banshee Queen. And she's trying to just eradicate the night elves. She wants to. She basically says, let's do genocide on these fucks and just roll through the forest. And so this first one is you push into the Darkshore area 
And with the expansion, they're bringing back World PvP because in the past, the servers, there was multiple different servers. There was a, a, a normal server, which is just player versus environment, PvE. You had PvP servers where you were flagged for PvP out in the real world whenever you were out, just like it would be normal in a type of war situation. So you would get okay. ganked. You get ganked by level 60s at the time when level cap is 60. You know, the high level guys would always come and find a low beast that are questing and trying to level up and kill them. It was just part of the game. They'd camp you for a while. But if you play Eve enough, you're used to being camped and you can be camped for days. So they don't have that big of attention span. <laughs> but, but it's there. But it's there. And then they have some role-playing servers. And so what they've done is they've changed all the servers to normal, except for a few of the role-playing servers. And But now you can flag yourself for, P, for PvP, and what it does is it gives you a boost of 10% experience points when you're out fighting. And if you can kill um, 10, 10 players without dying, you get a boost of 15% experience points. So it's sort of... It, pre it pays you to be active in PvP and engage on people. And you get honor points, and you can use those to spend and level up, and you can spend to buy good gear on the PvP side. So for a long time, that had been dead because everyone would just hide in these sanctuary cities and jump around if they weren't questing for some reason. they just dance parties and stuff like that. Um, sure, of course. Uh, on the other side... On the Alliance side, what the Alliance is going to do is they're going to invade over into the Undercity, um, which is where the undead and Lady Sylvanas has her her capital. And the Undercity sits underneath these ruins of Lordaeron that was an Alliance um, stronghold. But if you played through um, Warcraft 3 and the expansion the Lich King expansion, I can't remember the name of it, um, that's when Arthas becomes the Lich King and he, like, destroys Lordaeron pretty much and betrays his family and be goes up in the frozen north and rules the undead on that side. So they're going to, the Alliance is going to come in and take out the Undercity. So it's going to be really cool because so we're first starting to the invasion to take out Darnassus, and anytime you get to kill a night elf, it's awesome. Sure, <laughs> that's a lot of information. It is a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> so they do that pre-launch, and then with the expansion when it finally launches, they've expanded the map again, added new zones, and so you're going to quest and level cap is moved to 120. Right. So you can do anything. I mean, I, I I couldn't show everything on the stream. I showed PvP, which is the most exciting. But right. all the crafting that they have is pretty involved now. It, it takes a while to get through if you want to do any of the crafting professions. Build your own armor, weapons, make potions. Um, make You can be a tailor. You can make shirts and cloth. Would you, would you recommend, because I know my computer could run it, if... If I had no intention of ever paying a dime and, like, say if the four of us got online and just played to level 20, would you could play for free, would that even be worth it? I wouldn't even touch any of this expansion stuff, would I? Or would that, would the PvP and all that kind of be included at that point? No, the PvP, well, you have to mark yourself for PvP. Right. So, But I'd be able to? You, you, I don't know if you can turn PvP on until level 20 or not. Yeah. So and, do you think it'd be worth it to play that at all, or do you think that's pointless? It's definitely worth it to play the game to experience 1 yeah. to 20. Yeah. And, and they'll get you, because 20 is when you get your riding mount finally. Because yeah. before that, you walk everywhere. Yeah. And it's yeah. a big place. It's, it's, it's massive. No, what's, the game, what's the gameplay uh, like in comparison to, say, something like Neverwinter? It, it's... It was well before Neverwinter, so Neverwinter sort of emulates right. that. Um, you know, is it similar, it, or is it really drastically it, different? It's, it's similar to the questing, how you go talk to NPCs, they give you a quest. You go out and kill, like, kill ten frenzied fur fire blogs, you know, yes. fur bulgs. Um, you know, go collect 
you know, 10 of this gem or go out there and, and do this. So it's similar. You go out, do that, and come back and turn it back in. Uh, World of Warcraft has really changed it up where now they, they've made it easier to progress zone to zone. So you don't have to go get two quests, go out, do that, run back, get two more quests in the same fucking area you were just at. They, they, they streamlined it. So everything you see in Neverwinter that shows you, like, gives you the arrow where to go for your quest, that's already, World of Warcraft has been doing that. And they, they allow player add-ons, so players can build these apps that you can add on, and it does stuff like if you want to track all the mining nodes in each zone, you can do that. If you want it to have special timers and screen flash when something happens, you can have those added on. You know, it's just multitudes of, of player interaction over the years. Cool. Nice. <laughs> All right, well, you'll have to uh, give us a report once it launches. What is it again? Battle, battle for Azeroth? Yep, Battle for Azeroth. Azeroth. All right, yeah. Once it's out, you'll Death have to, you'll have to give us the opinions. And that's why, for the Horde... Well, if I didn't show it. If I played my undead character, I have an undead priest, um, which is awesome because he goes in a shadow form. If he kills a human, what you can do is you can go up to the human and cannibalize and eat the human to regain health. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's pleasant. <laughs> it's awesome. awesome. Yeah, totally. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thanks, Jeff. For thanks, Jeff. The knowledge. Welcome, everybody. This is our new section here. <laughs> it's called yep. the Midnight Mashers. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's just where that's we're gonna, we are. We're going to talk uh, video game news real quick. Um, a game very special and hot this year. God of War. And full spoilers. Enough. Full spoilers, absolutely. Full spoilers. Uh, full spoilers. Very happy to have finally beaten this Friday night. Um, you got it done quicker than I thought you would. <laughs> you, you're acting like it, it wasn't going to be till next year you'd be done <laughs> I know and the, the thing is I thought I, was, I would have to go through those side missions or I'd get lost mm. in oh, it yeah. but uh. I just hurried up and completed the story and <laughs> I'm going to go back and get all the Valkyries and everything else dude the Valkyries are fucking hard you yes they are you can get all of them uh, I'm gonna try. Too for me. I, I'm I've gonna gotten try. through I've gotten through <laughs> three Valkyries I think I got three too, and uh, and I ran into one that was like impossible. Yeah, <laughs> there, there, I think there's an order that you should go. There, there's an order of Valkyrie to Valkyrie. Right. Yeah. But I'll have dude, to look that up because I do want to. Yeah. Take a shot at it. Well, so, dude, what what was your favorite part? I mean, play on normal. Did you, did you play it on normal? normal? Yeah, I played on normal. Nice. Yeah, that's what I played on. Yeah. yeah. Um, it seemed kind of like, easy, I thought, to be honest. But yeah. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want it to be too hard, though, so I was okay. Right. Yeah. I didn't get stuck at a section from that long, no. if, I, yeah. if anything. Uh, but, I mean, just a breathtaking fucking game, dude. That, that just, um, the, you know... Not to get into too mushy of material here, but the father-son connection was just unreal. Like it's fucking seeing awesome. that in a game, just uh, illustrated, and that kind of play was phenomenal. I, and to I, connect it to mythology is just unreal to me. I honestly wasn't a big fan of the kid. He's such a little dick half the time. I'm like, God. <laughs> well, it, it was kind of cool like, because just, I, I thought it was kind of cool because it starts out and he's pretty innocent and and you know he's. Kratos is teaching him the way of the world, and this kid's like looking through the world with these rose colored glasses. And then as the game progresses, he starts to get hardened because he starts yeah. having to kill things. And then when Kratos tells him that he's the son of a god, then he becomes a little fucking asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but he does that, when he's the an asshole to the dwarfs, that was. Yeah. Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. But I realize now that that personality type that he exhibited before he reverted back to being noble yeah. is totally Loki. Yeah. yeah. When, when we found out he was Loki in the end, I was I did yeah. not see that coming. I know. That was, that was awesome. That was <laughs> fucking awesome. That whole it makes sense though. It does with the personality type that he had because you know he oh. he walks the line between being a complete dick and uh, being you know occasionally noble. 
Yeah. Yeah. He really always loses that. So next yeah. being Thorn versus Loki. Yeah. Uh, did you you went back to the house? Right? He did. Yes. Yeah. I, he I told, I told me to him. Back. I told him. <laughs> okay. I was yeah. like, go back to the house, and that's all I said. <laughs> go back to the house, and yeah. was, I think his text was, "Whole oh, wow, what the something like I don't remember what it was." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was awesome. I said I wanted I wanted a piece of Odin, but yeah, yeah. You yeah. probably got a War Three, <sighs> so, but uh, yeah. yeah, I just I, the combat in that game is just so fun and good. Like it's almost perfect. Like <sighs> it was. It's, that action, the the way it flows so seamlessly. Mm -hmm, I mean, yeah. just I I haven't seen, or, or I've seen few, if any, action games that flowed like that. Yeah, 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 for sure. From cutscene <laughs> into combat. Is that what yeah. you're talking right. about? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That I mean, even <clears throat> like the stuff where you you know, like if you had an enemy, uh, a grapple on an enemy, and like you do the knee or the the punch with the R1 versus R2. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like yep. you get like five <laughs> shots in, but it looks really good. You yeah, know? it looks awesome. <sighs> well, yeah. and I, I like how when you can throw your axe out, hit a creature, and then fight barehanded, and then you call your axe back, and it just destroys everything yeah. in its path coming back at right. you. Right. Oh man. Yeah, so I good. definitely like the axe better than the than the, the source. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> oh. Yep. I mean, the blades yeah. are really cool because when you go to Helheim and you get those, it's just like... Oh, oh. Yeah, it was awesome. It's yeah. a moving yeah. moment yeah, yeah. In, in the story. Absolutely. Uh, also, another thing, I, and I'm getting this, that soundtrack. I'm totally getting the vinyl oh, for yeah. that soundtrack. <laughs> Do that they was, have it on vinyl? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, Bear McCreary. It's the same guy that does the Walking Dead music. Oh, really? <sighs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, he, he awesome. went out and got a hurdy-gurdy specifically to do the... But <laughs> to do the sounds for this game, the music for it. And... Oh, dude! I mean, like anytime they reveal stuff, like it was a those big moments in the game, you'd hear the choir like start to kind of leak in. Yeah, they'd be like, Ooh. oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was phenomenal. awesome. Well, yeah. it was so steeped in Nordic mythology too that I love it. Yeah, you know, it was just fully immersive. And... I don't know Nordic as as well as I know Greek mythology. I don't either, but I. Yeah. I, you know, I knew it enough to an extent about the 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 ice giants and and Thor. Ragnarok and the and the wolves and everything. Yeah. But, and uh, Thor. Yes. And Thor. Yes. You know, mostly yeah. from Thor, huh? <laughs> well, no, I I read actually read even before I started reading comics. I w I was reading mythology because I was obsessed with Greek mythology growing up. Yeah. And so I I kind of took on a little bit of Nor Norse stuff, but not. To the extent that you know, then the, reading the comic book was awesome because you get a lot of that information in there. But uh, just a phenomenal game, dude. I you know I don't know if I can. It's such a hard toss up to me between because they're so different as games between that Celeste and and Doki Doki. But I know, right? I know. <laughs> yeah, it's so hard to put Celeste over God of War, but. It's a fucking awesome game. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're just so different. I mean, it, the, the one common theme between the three is the just emotionally, like, reckless. Right. It's like, you walk out cool. of each of those games and you're just like, whoa, yeah. what the hell just happened? You know? Yeah, the storytelling was... I, I love all the the unexpected twists. And, yeah. Uh, but, you know, even... You know, as Freya. close watching Freya, Freya was awesome. and yeah. her son. Freya. Yeah. You know, yeah. and her son's an asshole, but you understand yeah. why he is because what she did to him. Yeah, that's why she was going to allow herself to be killed. Yeah. It was, yeah. Man, that was a yeah. crazy battle, too. That yeah. was a long <laughs> was a, battle. Yeah. That was, that was long. That was long. Fantastic. That was awesome. She'll I probably thought, be coming for him next game too. I think yeah, it's totally. Freya and if Freya that. and Thor will be the yeah. two main villains. No. <laughs> but then yeah, when I, they finally go to spread his mom's ashes and Kratos' wife's ashes, just going into that room where it tells that whole story. That was crazy. That was dude. awesome. Yeah. Because when it when he show when it showed him, you know, they show him either dead or dying on the ground. Just that and then the I tried to go back to it to see it, and they had the the sheet 
that fell back on top of it, so oh, you couldn't move it oh. away. But, that was awesome, how they revealed that at the end. Basically, the whole game was already laid out, foretold. And, yeah. Yeah. You know. That that room was crazy. Yeah. Walking into there and realizing that they're all dead. Yeah. And yeah. seeing that around. I mean, the visuals was just just a stunning fucking game, dude. It's like, yeah. I mean, any point in there, you could pick and get a camera shot. Uh, just the work that they put into this. Mm-hmm. Is massive. I mean, incredible. What's the stu- Who's the studio? Uh, Santa Monica, I thought it was. Was it Santa Monica? Sounds right. It sounds right. It's... They deserve an award for that because it's. I think they did get an award. No, not yet. They will though. They got to. I mean, they. Were... I'm sure it'll get Game of the Year by you know, a lot of people. It, it works. They worked so hard. Well, they had five years to make the game, and you can tell that they took their time. At least they. You know, try and rush it out there like a lot of games are just rushed out and suck. And yeah. <clears throat> how do you like the the That's new somber too. Kratos versus uh, the old Kratos? Mm, I like the new one better. He's like, got yeah. way more totally way more personality and uh, depth to his character than, yep. than the Third old dimen- Kratos. Three dimensional. Yeah. Have you ever the watched was just Rage? <laughs> have you watched yeah. those videos where they have the guy, the voice actor for Kratos? And he's telling dad jokes. No. Dude, it is fucking awesome. I'm totally going to watch that. It's so awesome. Because <laughs> he's sitting there trying to tell these dad jokes in Kratos' voice. And it's just, it's the perfect delivery. Because That's all I awesome. hear is boy. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. Boy. I'm totally going to check that out. All right. Oh. Well, yep. that's been our uh, Midnight Mashers section on God of War. Yeah. If you haven't played it yet, for some reason, <laughs> go out and check it out. Even if you're not big into uh, single player, you know, it's Do a it. very immersive experience. You'll totally lose yourself in it. Yeah, if you don't have a PlayStation, buy one. You'll, you'll get Spider-Man in a month or two. There you go. So. You can't beat that. <laughs> and you can use the Xbox you have as a paperweight to hold down your comic books. <laughs> so it's win-win. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Peace. Yep, thanks. Blockhead Printing. For all your custom nerdy shirt printing, cons, parties, or gaming clubs, this is a full service, badass screen printing company. Check out blockheadprinting.com. Welcome, everybody, to our uh, GC and TTRPG. Wow. <laughs> <It's> actually, <laughs> um, we. Uh, <laughs> I could talk about this all day long. We're going to hit up some 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 role playing games, specifically Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I've been wanting to discuss this for a while. We're going to get into multiclassing, which I don't think anybody in the lifers uh, has yeah. done yet. But I was approached by Josh last night about Merla doing it. Right. So yeah, I don't even know how to. So I'm I'm totally interested in the. And what to, yeah. just learning what's up with it. So talk to me like it's 101, right? Gotcha. He yeah. uh, he wants to uh, start go, uh, moving towards a wizard. So he wants Merlin to be a wizard. Uh, what? In addition to his ranger, which That's is totally... Fucked up you know, wizard. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, but he can do it. So this is how it works. When you level up, you can just choose another class. Uh and level up in that class instead. So if you're level 5, you got the XP to go to level 6, you can instead devote that XP towards one level 1 in whatever class you want. Okay. I, I think with 5th edition, there's no um, conflicting classes. Sure. Well, so you could say it takes, if you're level 5, it takes... 1,000 XP level up, level 1 only takes 200, then can you level up, like, pretty quick, like, with the other class? No, like, no, that's the thing. To... You would be, the, I mean, you, it would serve you well to uh, multi-class early on, because once you right. get to the advanced, once you get to, like, a level 5, it's going to yeah. take a lot more to get to that first and, level for no. a class. Okay. Yeah, but the cool thing is, like, you can add just all that stuff. I mean, Merlin's gonna get spellcasting. Right, totally. You yeah. know, totally. which is a do they <laughs> like the only game that I've ever played that has a, a system like that was Final Fantasy XI, and uh-huh. in that you your 
your subclass had to be couldn't be more than half of your main. Like, uh-huh. is there anything like that in D and D? Could he potentially just keep using the other one instead and pass yes. it up even, or be side? Yeah, he okay. could abandon being a ranger and just go full throttle mage. Sure, um, he can ping pong back and forth and do two. That's cool. Yeah, two mage and then three more ranger, uh, or he could do one each, you know, and just keep leveling up that way. Um, you can even can you do three. Can you do any classes? Yes. You can, you can do, do four or five. You can do four. I've never heard past four classes. Oh. But you can do try and, and quad. I, I thought I thought though there in fifth edition that there was that stipulation that if your base stats Yes, did well, I was not about to get pre-re- into that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Prerequisites you, you must have prereq scores in both classes to multi class. So even if you don't have a prereq in your original class. Let's say you're a barbarian and you want to be a cleric also. you got to have a 13 in strength and a 13 in wisdom at that point. I didn't know there have. was a prerequisite for classes. There's not until you multi-class. Until you multi-class. Oh, yeah. okay. Is that listed Score-wise. in the player's handbook or something? Yeah. Or is that yes. just a... It's in, yeah. the sec- the, it's in the multi-class section. Okay. Chapter 5. Cool. Yeah, I didn't know that either until I read it today. Um, it's kind of crazy. But yeah, it only comes into effect when you multi-class. So the, the thing is, oh God, I mean, most of the people, I, especially you guys, you all have like super high scores. Sure. So I don't think it's going to, you know. But like, for example, I think if, um, I, I don't know which class uses charisma, but like Merla couldn't do, I don't know. That's a sorcerer uh, that uses charisma. Yeah. Right, so he could she couldn't be a sorcerer. Gotcha. He's got like a pretty knock. shitty charisma. So yeah. my, my question though was always with multi-classing is, as you're going through, and you gain XP, you only you can only give that gained XP to one of the other classes, right? You can't right like expend it. So okay. That's what I thought. I just wanted because yeah, I, I had toyed with the idea of giving Jan the cleric uh, a few levels in rogue, but yeah. then I was worried that it was going to go against her uh, vestments and her her just persona. But I wanted to give her like lock picking skill, a uh, skill, and then the hide and shadow skill, so she uh-huh. could be a sneaky a healer. Yeah. That's and nice. there's now there are some there are some abilities that I don't I don't know them right off the top because it's a lot to get into. Yeah. And I want to keep it brief, but there are some abilities that you either um, don't get depending upon what class, mm-hmm. or there are some that are different. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's also your proficiency bonus is always based on your total number of levels. When you gain your first level in a new class, you only gain some of those proficiencies. But they have it illustrated on a table, so you know, right. check it out. Um, I just, I feel like with uh, Thanon, since he's been my only character, that I wanna, I'm more anxious to get those like super skills in the yeah. higher levels. Right. Where I wouldn't want a multi-class to take away my progression towards that. You know, absolutely, what I mean? like, yeah. Yeah. But I can see if you've played been playing Dungeons and Dragons your whole life and you've played every class, then it would be it would be an interesting way to like you say, have a fighter who can do spell casting or whatever. Yeah. And there are some I, I think there are some classes that fit each other really well. I mean mm-hmm. if you're a ranger thief, holy shit. Oh, you know? Okay. Yeah. You <laughs> I the 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 if you start getting into the higher levels and you've you, you know, if you're like instead of being a tenth level ranger, if you're like Level five ranger, level five thief. I mean, you're, you're still like very competent. I mean, totally. That's that's some serious shit. And then the spell casting, um, you know, you it it sort of depends partly on your total number of levels. Uh, you know, if you t- pick two spell casting classes, that would be your total number of levels. Versus if you have one class that's a spellcaster it, it, it's it's different it's very different sure. yeah you, you picking your spell points and everything um 
if you have a spell cast in both classes, there's a sort of a, a set of rules, but uh, like your your spell slots are determined by adding together all levels mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. bard, cleric, druid, uh, sorcerer, or wizard. But if you're like a paladin or paladin ranger, <laughs> paladin. Uh, paladin. Half rounded down, and then a third for Eldritch Knight and Arcane mm. Trickster. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. gets the creative juices flowing for sure. Yeah, there's just uh, you can get into some cool class mixing that complement each other. I think you know. Well, I think one reason why. Yeah, sure. In the in the lifers where we're doing the Strahd campaign, I think the reason why a lot of us didn't do multi-classing outside of half the group is first time playing yes was totally our our entire party is really well rounded yeah we, you're right we have right. all of that in in just in so the there's there's no need to to multi class really unless it's more of just personal fun and yeah and whatnot. Right. and it's very different from i think two e where you had classes that you could not be yeah you know they had limits like you couldn't i don't think you could be uh, a, f- a fighter and a wizard. I don't. I don't. Right. I, don't rem- I don't remember. I don't remember, I don't remember what, what. Yeah, there there were just some that you couldn't share. With each I would other, think so. also like if you were playing in a smaller group, like a group of three or something like that, it would be advantageous for you to pick something that can heal. No matter yes, if you're a, if you're a fighter of some sort, you know. Yeah, I so thought about it for Milby. <laughs> right. So, right. Yeah, but you have a paladin in that group. He can heal. Yeah. No, totally. <laughs> right. Yep. All right. Well, thanks for the uh, for yeah. Definition. Thanks for the education yep. there, Derek. That is, yep. is yeah. always good. For sure. Paladin. Paladin. <laughs> Dragonborn Paladin. All right. Welcome everybody to the the GC and CCBBC <laughs> Comic Book Book Club. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> what up? Yep. Uh, it was actually Dirk's pick this week or uh, this month. Um, it was uh, Immortal Hulk. Number three, um, I actually didn't finish three. I made it through like two and a half because I got called into work today, but I still want to talk about it, so I'm just getting, I'm getting, so, we're going full spoilers. And full I'm, spoilers. I'm, I'm taking the spoilers, so. You read half um, of the issue, you said? Yeah, I, did, I read okay. like one, two, and I started three, and then I. I think we could just not talk about yeah. the last page, the it's going to be it. fine. Ah, uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I wanted to talk about, about that last page, page but yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's cool. I don't care if you want to. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's not crazy, but, you know. So, it's I got to say, Dirk, you've been telling us for a while that we all need to be reading this book and uh, just talking about the horror take on the Hulk. I, I felt like a couple things kind of sprung up to me, like the art jumping around. I I didn't – we've been hit with a lot of that lately, of the books that we've been yeah. covering where there's different artists throughout – and so right away when I saw it, it was immediately a turnoff. But once I got into the book, I liked it. Each each yeah. distinct I think that was intentional was cool. though, right? Yeah, it is because like, it's, it's the person telling the story. Right? Is it the, is it the same artist? I feel like it was even the same artist. And uh, they, it might she, be. Uh, they yeah, they just two different styles. <laughs> for the... Dirk will have to tell us in the comments. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know offhand. But. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. The main art for that book is really great, though. <laughs> yes, it is. Is, that, is, what sty- is it like one of these styles in this book? or? No, the main art for this book is really great, is what I was saying. I don't know that there was a main art. I thought it was like evenly spaced. <laughs> First two. Well, I think he means like, so the, uh, the, the art split off when people were telling their stories, right? right. Yeah. Other I than think he means the main the art is like when somebody wasn't telling a story, just the action of what was happening with the reporter. I guess I'm yeah, talking they... about one. And Did you read one and two, Nate? No, I did not. Oh, okay. Then I see what you did. The one and two were all the same artist. Yeah. Like, and, and that's, uh, I think this It's so good, man. Like, I yeah. dig it. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Yeah, and then the one other thing <clears throat> yeah. that I'll shut up is, uh, the Dirk, you've always been talking about how this is a horror book, and you see that for a second, like, in the church scene. Um, yeah. Just how they describe what happens in front of them is gruesome, right? And definitely right. more than I thought it would be. So I, I'm, this one's definitely on the list for me. I got to go back and see the rest of what they've been doing because that was a super small portion of this book, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm shocked that they 
showed what they did uh, right. in a Marvel book with the girl's head twisted around. Yep. yep. You know. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> just to let you know, Corey, they uh, the guy uh, I forgot the guy's name that he's fighting. The blonde guy with the green skin. Oh yeah. Yeah, right, the right. guy with the 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 ghost. The human race yeah. or something. Headshot. Right. Headshot. Headshot. They I'm go sorry. back to his hot ho- shot. Hot shot. That's it. They go back to his uh, hotel room and they find a girl that's tied up in a chair with her head twisted around. Yep. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Rip. Uh, rip. Green door. Uh, <laughs> So it, I mean, that's like vertigo level stuff. <laughs> totally. This book totally. is brutal. It's, I'm surprised of how brutal it is with how popular the Hulk is in the MCU, and he's really not like that brutal or evil or anything. And then this is yeah. if somebody picks this up and reads this, they're gonna be like, "Whoa, that's not the Hulk <laughs> I was expecting." The uh, story and, is, um, they so all the writers convene to to talk about what they're doing, like what the future projects are for Marvel for the year, and. So everybody does their pitch and everything, and then I guess they sort of green light on the spot, like, and they talk about, you know, so all the writers are sort of on board with each other and know who's doing what. Right. Everybody that walked out of that room was just blown away by his take on Hulk. Sure. They were like, yeah, I mean, Donny Cates was saying it, uh, Jerry Duggan, they were all like, that's the book to watch this year. You know, yeah, he talks a lot. lot. He does talk a lot. Uh, and he's like smart. And was was when they were talking about the arrow. Is that in uh, book two or three? <sighs> the arrow. Uh, probably, probably two. It's probably two because I don't remember any arrow. Yeah. Can we spoil two? Right. <laughs> I think it'd be probably the rare person who read three and not two. And, right. And like, like me, they probably would uh, don't care. They'll go back and read it anyways. Yeah, because yeah, they were talking about in the second issue how he had, I assume Hawkeye, shoot an arrow into his brain to see if it could kill him. And uh, he he said it made him, he lost a lot of his, his intelligence. So he's not as smart as Bruce Banner used to be. And like the, it seems like the Hulk is almost just as smart as him. Like, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> well, that was Civil War too, right? I don't know. Where he got assassinated by Hawkeye. Do y'all remember that? We covered it. <laughs> I don't really know. know. You, I do remember it. Now that yeah. you say that, but the... I didn't know. I guess I didn't even read two, so... I well, no uh, the, the assumption was that Bruce Banner was dead from that shot, right? But yeah. now we're learning in this series that he... It might possibly be immortal because he regenerated. Yeah. So, so even that arrow to the head that he, you know, should have died from did not kill him. Yeah. Is the Wolverine style regeneration? Is this the first time that's ever been used with the Hulk? Oh yeah. The first time I've heard of it. Yeah. It is. Totally. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and it's gruesome. They show the the rib cage. Yeah. It's crazy. Spine, you can see the two sides of the spine through the hole. Yeah. 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 But I, I'm sure that's gonna play with his mind somehow, right? You yeah. know, like. Now he finds out that he can't die, really. Uh, right. I, it, it's weird. The layouts reminded me a little bit of Creep Show, like especially the one that okay. looked like um, like uh, Ditko and uh, Jack yep. Kirby ish that style. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, I thought that reminded me. That was cool. I totally dug that. That was my favorite of the three. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, should we? Corey about the last page yeah well let's do it so uh, at the at the very end of the comic uh, there's a guy that's he's given a phone call to that reporter and saying that he's been trying to get in touch with her and stuff uh, that he has Bruce Banner as a close friend and he looks in the glass in his apartment and in the reflection is Sasquatch from Alpha Flight oh really yeah nice but this is what I, the first thought I had was like, they need to do more horror takes on some of these characters because I would totally read a Sasquatch horror. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Totally. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't normally care that much about Alpha Flight otherwise, but shit. I you used put, to like Alpha Flight. Well, hopefully that's what this is. 
Yeah. And he's a yeah. Packer. <laughs> he's a Packer. He's, he's a Packer? He's a Packer. Oh. Wow. Wow. I didn't even think about that. Fuck the Packers. He says it. That's how. That's like his <laughs> in to the reporter or whatever. Oh he's yeah. Trying to find Bruce Banner, and she's like, "That's not how this works. I don't just tell you where my sources are." And and he, she's like, "How do you get this number?" And he said, "Oh, I told your boss who I was." And he says he's on the pack. He says, "Lucky he's a Packers fan." Oh, I forgot about that. Wow, <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. I guess. Uh, yeah, being that close to Canada, right? <laughs> yeah. do, are we giving a score to this? Or are we just? Oh, we can give a score. Dig it. Yeah. If you guys want, I'm gonna yeah. give it a solid eight. I give it a eight point five. <laughs> I'm also at eight point five. This got me excited about it. You, you're right. I knew you. You don't steer me wrong when it comes to comics, but uh, this definitely has impressed me more than anything I've read out of Marvel in yeah. in recent since we've been covering these books. Yeah. It's yeah. Awesome. I really like it. Um, I I mean, I try. I, I don't like plugging Marvel books necessarily, sure. but if it's really good, dude, I'll do yeah, it. And Venom, Venom, and Immortal Hulk are the two best things they're putting out. So, yeah. <laughs> like, so, and then what's the the next CBBC? We're doing the Magic Order number one. Okay. Oh, we are sweet. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, because I wanted to do the tie-in with Netflix and all that. So. Yep. All right, so everybody read up on that one before next month and then join in the conversation. Get in it. All right. Thanks, guys. CBBC. Yep. Later. 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 Okay, everybody, this is the part of the show, my favorite part every month. We give the love back to the people who gave it to us. We went up almost 100 subscribers this uh, month. It was nuts. The, uh, the We really appreciate every single one of you. And uh, part of us saying thanks is we do a quick shout out of uh, to those of you who have YouTube channels as well. So go down to the description of this video. There will be links to all these people's channels down there. Click them up. Give them a sub. Say hello. The uh, This is also a great spot for those of you who are in the list to Right, get with the community there. Talk to these other people. These people are active now and supporting yeah. awesome people because uh, they supported us. That didn't that didn't sound right, but you get the point. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much, everybody. This week, uh, Sarah K says, "Yeah, or and and don't forget the casual gamer." And then this kind of makes me sad. Is a day without <laughs> laughter. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, R.L. James and Katie's Kitties. <laughs> I got TVG live. <laughs> nice. And every month we like to do a little set, a little special treatment. The name of the week. It's a really super coveted award. Should be we name talked of the all month. the previous name, name of the week of the month. winners. Yeah, name of the month winners. That's name right. Of the month. You can go back and talk to all of them, and uh, they will tell you that. It's opened up new doors in their lives, and you know yeah. they've done they've gone to new fights since winning the award. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you guys? Who do you guys think this week? I, I I've got to go with Katie's Kitties. Yeah, Katie's, <laughs> Katie's Kitties. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter now, but I'm sorry. A day without laughter was freaking hilarious. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Well, Katie's Kitties, you are Probably. the name of the month. Wow. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching or listening to the show. Really appreciate it. It's been Comically Gaming, episode 115. Uh, please consider supporting us over at patreon.com slash gcandc for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, check out our written content that we throw up on the blog there while, while you're over there. You can also find us on Twitter at gcandc or join us on our Discord and Facebook groups. Or grab a T-shirt. Or a sticker at teespring.com. I'm trying to work on maybe some baby gear. So anybody baby has gear. Some... Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, well, we, always, action. we always want to thank Fred Thomas for his opening music and Sea Rider for our logo. Uh, thank don't you. Don't forget, uh, next month's CVC will feature the Magic Order number one. Read it up on it so you can join the conversation. And as always, thanks for joining all of y'all. Thank you. Have a good one.